Mario Madness is alive and well with Super Mario Odyssey just releasing on the Nintendo Switch and it's selling like hotcakes. Over 2 million sold in three days. It's getting all these crazy high reviews, nines and tens and whatnot. It's currently sitting at 97 on Metacritic. People have Super Mario Odyssey fever. And honestly, they should because I absolutely love the game. You might remember a couple days ago, I did a Super Mario Odyssey video. And now I'm sitting here again doing another Super Mario Odyssey video. RGT85, are you running out of ideas? N no, I have plenty of ideas, I just don't have enough time. But Super Mario Odyssey is taking up so much of my time that I want to talk about it more because it's just such an amazing game. And in my first video, talking about Super Mario Odyssey, that essentially was just my review of the game. I kept it spoiler free because I wanted anyone to be able to enjoy that video. This video, however, we're getting into the spoilers. We're getting into the nitty gritty and we're getting into some of the coolest things in Super Mario Odyssey. So for this video, we're going to talk about the five insane moments in Super Mario Odyssey. Now I'm not ranking these in any sort of order. So the last thing I talk about is just as important as the first thing, but these are the most five insane moments in Super Mario Odyssey that literally just blew my mind and put this game on another plateau for me. So sit back, relax, and let's talk about the five insane moments in Super Mario Odyssey. The first moment we're going to talk about is a huge spoiler, as will many of these moments. I think actually all of these moments are going to be spoilers, so you have been warned. I don't want to see people complaining in the comments, it's spoilers, you ruined the game for me. No, I warned you. I warned you. So the first thing I want to talk about is the end sequence in the story mode. Now, you of course are playing a Mario game, so it all builds up to finally battling Bowser for the final time and taking Bowser down, stopping this terrible wedding, and of course, saving Princess Peach. But here's where things get cool, because after you defeat Bowser, everything starts crumbling down around you. And the only way to get out is through Bowser's help. So how do you get that? Well, Mario has a wonderful thing called Cappy, and Cappy really opens up the world of Super Mario Odyssey. So you throw your cap, you land on Bowser's head, and you control Bowser in a mainline Mario game. Now sure, you've played as Bowser in mini game compilations and whatnots, Mario sports games, Mario Party, but in a mainline Mario game, controlling Bowser? No, you have never done this before. And let me tell you, it is sweet. Being able to destroy you know stuff in your way just punching through these blocks and you know destroying everything and making jumps and punching through more blocks and everything's cr you know crumbling around you and you're just wrecking stuff it was so cool I avoided spoilers for this game up until I bought it I didn't want to be spoiled by anything and it's very hard being a journalist and also avoiding spoilers for a main you know huge release in 2017 but I don't know if this was common knowledge or not that you were gonna be able to play as Bowser but it blew my mind it was so awesome so much to the fact that I would love a Bowser game where you control Bowser in this sort of style with this dominance and this power and whatnot. It would just be so much fun to wreck stuff. So the first insane moment in Super Mario Odyssey I wanted to talk about was you control Bowser and it's freaking sweet. The second thing I want to talk about is something that's introduced pretty early in the game, but it doesn't really become super cool until a little bit later in the game. So I mentioned Cappy when talking about Bowser. Cappy is essentially your sidekick. You throw him, you control different characters, you control different inanimate objects. It really opens up the game and makes the gameplay so fresh. And early in the game, you're in this little jungle scene, this little forestry area that's very early in the game, and you encounter Yoshi's big brother. This Big Tyrannosaurus Rex, and I am someone that loves dinosaurs. You put on the original Jurassic Park, I'm sitting there and watching the whole thing, even though I've watched it a million times. Because dinosaurs were just so cool to me growing up. I used to have a collection of dinosaurs, and of course, like many kids, the T-Rex was my favorite. So you saw in trailers for the game that you would be able to use Cappy on this T-Rex. And honestly, it's a pretty cool little thing. I enjoyed playing as the T-Rex. It's definitely not as cool as playing as Bowser. He's not as strong, and the time limit it does sort of make it you know a little bit weaker in my opinion because you know eventually Cappy's like oh I'm too tired I can't 
do the T-Rex no more, and you're just like, ah. So you can go back and take control of him again, but it's kind of like, ah, you know? I wanted a little more from the dinosaur. So, fast forward to a couple days ago. I've already beaten the game. I'm already doing things after the game. And Jason, my co-host on Nintendo Enthusiast, was like, do you ever see that chase scene in New Donk City? And I'm like, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Give me a little hint. So he explains it a little bit more. He's like, yeah, you're on the scooter and you're running away. And I'm like, no, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. And he's like, oh, you got to find that. It's really cool. Go in open doors. And I'm like, okay. So I'm looking around the city. I'm going in different open doors, finding different cool things I haven't found before. But I couldn't find this chase scene. And then I found it. And basically Mario's sitting on a scooter and Mario is facing towards you with the camera. And I'm like, okay, this is kind of weird. So I just start going on the scooter and boom. Here comes the T-Rex to chase it. And I was like, oh my God, this is so great. It was so great to see the T-Rex again. It felt like something straight out of Jurassic Park with this massive Tyrannosaurus trying to eat you and stop you from doing what you're doing, collecting power modes. And it's just so much fun. I've gone back and played that segment so many times because it's, it's just, it puts a smile on your face, you know? Especially when you love dinosaurs and grew up loving dinosaurs. It's just so interesting to see this in a Mario game. Yoshi all grown up. Is this the only appearance of Yoshi? No. No, it's not. Sticking with New Donk City, I absolutely adore the level. It was so much fun to explore this level. And at first, people were sort of like, oh, it's kind of weird, you know, Mario and humans and, you know, cars and stuff. But it totally blends together. It totally feels good. And it's my favorite area in Super Mario Odyssey. And in this level, you basically, the main goal is to help Paulina out. And Paulina is trying to put on this festival. You have to gather up musicians and then they do a festival. And the end of the festival, the end of New Donk City's level was just so amazing. So obviously it's called New Donk City, playing on the fact that Donkey Kong was the first appearance of Mario as Jumpman. And so the end of the level, basically Paulina is doing the One Up Girl song. So that awesome song is playing in the background. There's all these fireworks and all this cool stuff happening in the background. But the game transitions to one of those 2D scenes. And in this 2D scene, you play through Donkey Kong levels while the song is playing. And it's so awesome. And you just go throughout different segments of the city in this really long Donkey Kong level. So much to the fact at the end of it is Donkey Kong and you have to defeat him all while uh, One Up Girl is playing in the background. Just so epic. So epic and so creative and that's one of the best things about this game is the creativity This was an absolutely insane moment that I loved and it just put this big goofy smile on my face Because it was so well thought out and really just an amazing segment from the game the final two things are pretty intertwined and they're both pretty insane. And a lot of it does sort of play a bit into nostalgia, but that's okay. You know, as long as it's something awesome, that's good enough for me. And so after you defeat Bowser, after you then save yourself, Mario and Peach playing as Cappy, you get the end credits and you're like, okay, this was an awesome game. You know, I really had fun with this. And then you wake up in Princess Peach's area, basically her castle area. And you're like, what is this? What is going on here? I need to know more. Costumes are a huge part of Super Mario Odyssey. It allows for customization. You can have all sorts of cool different costumes that have throwbacks to Mario references, new sort of stuff. It's so cool. So you go into this shop and you can get a Super Mario 64 outfit and look like a polygonal Super Mario 64. And Super Mario 64 is my favorite Mario of all time. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm walking up to Peach's castle as Super Mario 64 and it looks so great. And there's so much stuff to do around the castle. It was just, it was, it was amazing when I saw this. It just, it just felt so good because I love Super Mario 64. And the fact that there's all this fan service to the game, you know, right down to the costume and the polygonal look, I was just so happy to see this. And then I thought to myself, you know, what was that old, what was that old secret? You know, everyone used to, when you were on the playgrounds, when Super Mario 64 came out, hey man, I heard the Yoshi's on top of the, the castle. You gotta get on top of the castle, man. And I was like, dude, you can't get on top of the castle. And eventually people did get on top of the castle and Yoshi wasn't there, of course. So as I'm playing the, this kingdom, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, you know, I want to get on top of the castle. There has to be a way to get on top of the castle. I'm sure there'll be some purple coins or something up there. Let me get to the top of the castle. I go to the top of the castle and who is there looking at me? Yoshi. 
freaking Yoshi. And I'm like, oh, what's up, dude? And I'm like, bam, hit him with the cappy. And now I'm playing as Yoshi, complete with the little flutter jump where he kicks his legs and he goes a little bit higher, the long tongue. And I'm like, oh my God, like, are we serious right now? This is so good for me. This is so insane for me because it's basically giving me that same feeling I had when I was, you know, 11, 12 years old playing Super Mario 64 for the first time. It was just absolutely insane to see Peach's castle in this beautiful rendering, to see all the stuff to do and to see Yoshi at the top of the castle. It just felt so good. And it was just, you know, it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. So there you have it. Those are my five insane moments in Super Mario Odyssey. Moments that just blew my mind, blew me away, and made this game a cut above the rest in my opinion, and arguably the best Super Mario game of all time. Let me know what sort of moments you enjoyed in the game, what moments you found to be really impactful for you, and what really stood out in your mind. And thank you for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, get some good discussion going down in the comment section, hit that like button. If you really like me, I got shirts in the description box. I got a Patreon you can help out the channel with. So let me know. If not, thank you for watching the video anyways, and I will catch you guys next time. Later. Take it